Bell Tower, Portland. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess I have a UFO report for you. Okay. Do you have a fill-in-the-blank form, or how, where do you want me to start? Is this something that was reported recently? Yes, okay. last night. Okay, can we get the party's name? Okay, I got four people. Okay. Actually, five people. These okay. four gentlemen. These four gentlemen work for Delta Airlines at Portland, Maine. Okay. Okay, they're either mechanics and or ramp agents. Okay. Right. Next party. Now you have all the all the eyewitnesses. The first four gentlemen. Well, go ahead. Maybe you should ask me the questions, and I'll give you the answers. That's probably be more effective. But just a quick description of what they saw. Well, what they drew, these these uh, four people pretty much agreed that it was, you know, oval shaped. Um, actually, what they drew, it looked like a, a, a fedora hat, basically. Okay. Maybe. They estimate to be uh, the top part of it was say 30 feet high. But actually, when he draws, it looks like your typical flying saucer, basically. Yeah. Okay. What they said was they were on the ramp at Portland. This was around 10:30 last night, and three of the people were on the ground. The other individual was in the airplane. They were working on the airplane, and they were looking up at the cockpit. So they were, you know, on the ground looking up, and they saw this thing in the sky. They estimated it to uh, um, to be about between 1,000 and 1,500 feet uh, above ground level, moving across the airport to the south, let's say about 40 miles an hour, 40, 50 miles an hour. And they could detect no sound from this thing at all. Okay. And one of them, or two of them, said that there were no lights like navigation lights or anything like that but that at one point there was this brownish glow that the whole thing was glowing very dimly okay I got it okay and this other guy what's his name uh, was in an airplane coming up towards Portland and I was uh I was a controller on duty at the airport, and I estimated this thing to be, you know, after I'd interviewed these people, I estimated this thing should be down southwest of Portland by, say, 15 miles or so. And I ran the radar out, and there was a target out there. So I asked this guy to go over and take a look at it. And I had this guy vectored right on top of this thing, and he saw it momentarily. And they, they both said that this thing glowed like a a dull brownish glow momentarily then disappeared. Um, and I had them vectored right over top of the thing and back and forth and um, then it, they saw this momentarily then the thing disappeared. They couldn't see it any longer. And he was out there a good, a good uh, 15, 20 minutes, you know, without ever spotting it again. Did it leave your screen at the same time? <laughs> no. I had a good target on it the whole time. Yeah, he was around it for maybe 10, 15 minutes okay. while I tracked it. P's radar also tracked it. P's Air Force Base radar tracked it. Okay. And they finally lost uh, radar contact with it about 22 miles southeast of P's. Okay. What time did this all occur? This was between, well, it was over the airport at Portland around 10.30 or so. And let me see my notes here. Um, 0320, which had been 1120. The target was at uh, 195 at 19 from Portland, tracking about 195 degrees at about 40 to 50 knots. Okay. Were you getting a strong return? Strong return, yeah. Okay. Just like an airplane. Okay. You know, sometimes you see a flock of birds and it changes shape, you know. And right. one hit, you get a good return, and then the next hit, you don't. This was a good solid return the whole time. Okay. Called the weather service and they said they didn't have any. The last balloon they had sent up, the radio zone balloon was up at seven o'clock. And when I asked these uh, ramp guys, uh, could it have been a balloon? They said no. Okay. All right, sir, can we get your name? Yeah, 
I'm an area supervisor at the Control Tower in Portland. Well, we sure appreciate the information, and if we get any follow-up on this, we'll get back to you. Now, Pease, Pease Air Force Base, the controllers there also saw this thing on radar. Okay. And uh, what was the other thing I wanted to tell you? Oh, yeah. This thing got to within about five miles of uh, the president's residence up at Kenny Bunkport. And I talked to the Secret Service last night and also this morning. And they would like to... Uh, I guess, the, I guess the main thrust is uh, they don't want this publicized. They want it investigated, certainly, but not publicized uh, because it's a pretty sensitive type thing. So that's their, that's their main concern. They certainly want it investigated, but they don't uh, make it do without the media finding out about it. If you need anything, you can also talk to those people, too. They'd probably be interested in, in uh, you know, finding out what it was, too. They're probably going through their channels, whatever they are. Right. So. Where are you located? We're in Seattle. Okay. Okay. Just out of curiosity, Dad, don't you guys have any like direct lines to NORAD or anybody like that? No, but they all carry our number. They and, do. And when people call them, why well, they refer them to us right away? They do. Yes. Do they ever call you back and ask about what what goes on or anything like that? No, they don't. As a matter of fact. Well, that's really strange. Well, they're pretty much out of it, at least officially. They're pretty much out of it. And uh, they don't uh, put any time into it, but they do cooperate. Hmm. Okay, Bob. Thanks very much. Thank you. I'd, I'd be interested to find out what, what goes on. Okay, thanks All right, a lot. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye-bye. UFO Reporting Center. Have you had anything more on what was reported last night? Not a word. Nothing from anybody. Uh, of course, that doesn't mean other people didn't see it. You know, we average, we figure that for every report we get, well, there's probably a thousand that we don't get. Mm -hmm. So pretty big odds there. Well, I was just wondering if anybody, any other government agency, agency got in touch with you. No. To reference this thing. No, they didn't. Hmm. That's really strange. We were. I was going over the winds aloft last night, from last night, and... Uh, Basically, the winds aloft uh, really don't line up with, uh, with it had it been a free-floating object, it doesn't make sense that it would be tracking the way it, it had been tracking. Yes. And at those speeds, for, for instance, at, uh, at uh, between 1 and 2,000 feet, it was like uh, between 335 and 340 at uh, about 18 knots, which uh, 3,000 feet, it was 340 at 20. And we don't get up into the 25 knot range until you're up to 10,000 feet, and then it's still out of the northwest, 325 and 25. Yes. First time we come up, winds uh, at 50 knots. It's up at flight level 200, and even at that, it's still 315 at 50, which means if this thing was tracking uh, 195 to 200 degrees, it was tracking against a uh, kind of a crosswind. Yes. Which pretty interesting to me. Did, I forgot to ask you, did that pilot ever give an estimate of the diameter of the object? Yeah, around 300 feet, he thought. Okay. About 300 feet. And uh, he, before he told me, before he made any mention to what he thought he saw, he asked his wife, and he said, I know what I think I saw. You tell me what you think you saw. And she described exactly what he saw. He was just in here about 15 minutes ago. Oh, okay. And he's going to be away for the next week or so. He's he's, uh, he's got to go down to Trinidad to purchase some seafood or something, and then he'll be back. But, uh, you know, we were sitting here talking about this thing and can't figure out, uh, just can't figure out how this thing could be. If, if it was one of these high-altitude balloons, so to speak, these real long, huge balloons, uh, we wouldn't think it would be going along at 50 knots for one thing. And the other thing is, we don't see how it could possibly be tracking against a quartering wind. Well, not only that, it would be ascending, too, at yeah. the same time. Yeah. So, uh, and also, I, I don't know whether these things are coated. It would have to have been coated with some type of metallic material to produce a radar return uh, the way it had. I mean, I got, I got just as strong a return from this object as I did from the aircraft when I was out there circling around it. So, you know. Yes. You know, the only the only other thing is that 
I could see, I've seen large flocks of geese and things like that. Now, they'll certainly produce speeds uh, that great and also give you a return that's just as strong as I observed. But uh, there's no doubt about it. They, they certainly wouldn't uh, produce this glow we're talking about. Not only that, you've got that close visual from the aircraft, too, which yeah. eliminate that. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, and that, uh, the president's retreat there, isn't that uh, uh, restricted airspace? It's it's prohibited airspace. Okay, for what diameter? Well, it's normally a one-mile radius oh. uh, of the point, but when he's here, it's a three-mile radius, three, so okay. six miles across, oh. which would have uh, you know, put this object... Uh, uh, probably three miles from the uh, from the edge of the prohibited area, maybe six or seven miles or so, something like that, from the center of this thing and past uh, to the east of it. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm surprised that the Air Force didn't scramble its jet on that. Well, it would have had a tough time, uh, probably, you know, tracking something at 50 knots. Yeah. You know, if you said scramble one uh, helicopter, that would have been, that would have been it. You know, yeah. That would have been the ticket. But uh, I guess I don't understand why the lack of, uh, when you get something like this, uh, I would have think there had been more of a procedure in place and people, you know, that you call this guy, he calls him, he does this, and this guy gets airborne. And, yeah. But it doesn't seem to be the, you know. And you, know, you had no other calls on it? No. Okay. Other than the, the, the Delta guys. And, yeah. You know. Uh, you have drawings of this, the sketches of the object? Um, yeah, I had a Delta guy draw it out and describe it. It's, I mean, it's, it's really uh, very sketchy. I mean, if you draw like a fedora hat, it's basically that. Okay. Um, everybody, everybody to a person said that it was elliptical. And she, you know, are you familiar with approach plates, uh, a pilot's approach plate to an airport? There's a, like what they call something like a fan marker. It's elliptical in shape, and they said like a football. Oh, okay. Like, like a like a football, basically. Okay. Flat or turned up? Yeah. Uh, well, it's just like a football. Flat. flat. You know, flat. Yeah. Okay. And shape. And it's funny because uh, you know the guy over at Delta and the guy, you know, in the airplane, a half hour later, 45 minutes later, described the same thing. Which, you know, so, you know, that's all I have. Okay, well, if we get any calls on it, you'll be the first to hear about it. Oh, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it, Bob. Bye. Bye-bye. Full reporting center. Hi, Bob. How are you? Uh, anything more on that thing from Saturday night? Not one word. God, I can't believe this. Yeah, it's very strange. I can't believe this. But like I said, that uh, there could have been a lot of other people who saw the object and just chose not to report it. But there haven't been any inquiries from any other federal agencies or anything? Nothing. Huh. That's kind of disappointing, to tell you the truth. Yes, it is. Yeah, I was hoping for uh, more calls. Well, what do, you, what do you do with this information? You just file it away for future reference or what? Yeah, we'll just have to sit on that and just hope that... Uh, Somebody will call on it. Of course, it's considered a, a very good report anyway, but uh, we'd still like to get some more ground witnesses. Okay, what kind of what kind of other stuff do you look for when you have a situation like this? Just another report of the same same nature? Or is that basically it? Yeah, confirmation by other witnesses is what we would be after. Mm -hmm. I was I just listened to the to the tape of the conversation I had with the people on the ground. Yes. And it was interesting. They, they said it was uh, a white, a huge white object. And then when I went over and talked to them and, inter and interviewed them, they said it was dark, okay? And then it, just for a moment, it had this brownish glow to it, which doesn't get any sense to me, but I don't know. You know, as it got further away, it might have appeared like a dark object or something. And it was right over the field that could have appeared white or something like that. But uh, I don't know. That's really strange. What I find interesting, again, is the fact that the guys on the ground described
describe something, and then, you know, the guy in the airplane 35 miles away, you know, half hour later reported the same thing. Yeah. Basically. Hmm. Well, if geese glowed, I would say it was a large flock of geese. <laughs> just, you know, I've seen, like I said, I've seen returns like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll keep waiting. Hopefully something will happen with this thing. Okay. We'll sure let you know if we get anything. Okay. See you, Bob. Thanks for calling. Thanks, yeah, thanks very much. Okay. Bye. This is Bob Gribble at the UFO Reporting Center in yeah. Seattle. Hi, Bob. How are you? Fine. I have a point of inquiry. Did you ever get any more input on that uh, case in last August? Uh, which one was that? The one where the object was seen over the airport? Not a word. I was I was hoping you would. Okay, what about... I haven't had a word at all, nothing. Okay. What about those pilots, the people who saw the thing from the aircraft? Did they ever uh, have anything more to say? He came in here. Uh, I talked to him extensively, and uh, he talked to the chief, and uh, there was just, you know, there was nothing... Nothing else came of it, and I'm, I'm really kind of disappointed, to tell you the truth. I don't know why there wasn't anything else, but uh, it just died. I guess nobody else, the only people that I know were, were the Delta people, you know, on the ground, and then yes. the guy that was airborne. Uh -huh. But I haven't heard anything. I, I was sort of hoping over the, the past months that uh, you would have had something else, and you would have called me with it. But I haven't heard it. I haven't even talked to the Delta people again, which I probably got to walk over and take a uh, see if they. Okay. Well, the reason, the main reason I called was I got a letter from a guy in San Francisco. Yeah. Or, well, in the San Francisco area, and uh, for years he has specialized in pilot sightings. And he uh, was inquiring. He says, "Have you heard anything about this reported sighting over Kenny? Was it Kenny Bunkport? Yeah. Yes. That's." Uh, the president's hideout, and uh, he wanted to know if I had any information on it. I thought, gee, that's strange. Where did he get it? I don't know. That's just it. This was San Francisco? Yeah. Well, what was he? Was he a pilot? Uh, no, he used, I believe he's retired, but he used to work for NASA. Yeah. Down there. Did you ask him where he got his information? No, this was in letter form, so I haven't had a chance to get back to him. What's the guy's name, do you know? Uh... <clears throat> Hold on a second. I, I got an airplane. Can you hold on one second? Sure. Just... Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, his name was Richard Haynes. H-A-I-N-E-S. I thought maybe somebody back there had did some talking to the press or something. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, it never hit. Never hit. Uh, never went that route. Okay. No, not a thing. Now, you were going to send me a copy of that pilot's letter or report. Uh, I didn't send that to you, huh? No. Okay, let me, let me make myself a note here. Okay. Okay. You know the guy, the Augusta one? Remember that one? June or July? Oh, what was that again? The guy was on the road. Remember the guy that was coming down 95 on the road? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. He came back up here physically. And, uh, you know, I wanted to know if there was anything more in it. And I said, not a word. Huh. There was, you know, any, there's two right there. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's a pretty sensitive issue. So. Okay. The other one about, the other one about, uh, you know, Augusta shit, uh, you know, I don't see any problem with that. That was done, you know, as, you know, per the, per the order that police were notified. Yeah. You were, and I even had the guy checked out. I even talked to the police and had the guy checked out, and he was okay. Okay. He wasn't a kook or anything. So I, uh, you know, that's why I called you with it. Very good. The only thing that was out of, you know, not exactly to regulation was the fact that I called you. Yeah. And basically, right in the book, it says we're supposed to furnish him with the phone number. But what the hell? He was right there, and I said, do you want me to do this? He said, sure, go ahead. And it was just a matter of, uh, you know, I I did the calling instead of just giving him the number. Yeah. You know? So that was it. Yeah, you know, you can do anything with that one that you want, but this, this guy is, you know, adamant as to what he, what he saw. Yeah. 
it, it, you know, hell, so are the guys at the airport in Portland. You get four guys saying all the same thing. It's hard to believe they didn't. You know, there wasn't something there. Right. So, you know, but I know of nothing and it was done. Things might have been done at other levels that I'm just absolutely not aware of or yeah. privy to. Uh, I don't know. Wow, well, maybe there's a possibility that... Uh some of those people on the ground or even the pilot and the party that was with him did a little bit of gossip, you know. Things Maybe were spread did. word of mouth. Maybe they did, but yeah. certainly nothing, nothing hit the papers here. Yeah, okay. And I'm glad of it, too, because I, you know, I uh, swore a blood oath to the, our friends down a little further south here that, hey, you know, they, they just don't need that kind of stuff. Their yeah. life is complicated enough with the job they Yeah, do. you bet. <laughs> Okay, I don't know. Geez, I, I wish, uh, God, I wish I knew more about these things. I'm just so ignorant of, of what has happened to date ever since this first started, you know, reporting these things first started. Why did the Air Force get out of the business, just out of curiosity? Well, I think they had a wildcat on their back, and they wanted to get rid of it after 19 or 20 years. I think they've got the answers. And uh, not only that, but uh, from the good information that I have read, uh, the CIA stepped in and says, hey, you guys are not doing this the way it should be done. You're talking too much. And as of now, kiss goodbye. Mm, really? And, uh, but I think that they were glad to get rid of it. Sure. Because they, uh, they had their big job to do, and uh, this was a pain in the ass. Yeah, but how do they get information from, uh, from... Now, do they come to you for information? No, but they do give out our number. They do? Yeah. And we know that they are conducting various investigations when these things are seen over military facilities, but they do it on the QT. I see. And when we know that they're operating, we just don't say anything and just let it go with that. Yeah. Because we can understand their problem. Sure. And they had a heck of a one, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the resources, the, the funds and manpower that were that were uh, probably involved were, were staggering, I would think, you know, at the time that these things would take. I mean, it's not like you're going downtown to uh, investigate some one person or something like that. You know, you're talking about a lot of resources and a lot of people and time spent interviewing and well not only that but we had information that uh, you know they have their own reporting uh, uh, centers their own for their own information intelligence and everything and their own circuits going from facility to facility and it got to the point where the whole system was being clogged by UFO reports yeah 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 so I, I just find it incredible that there there's so many of these reports and yet not you, you very rarely see you know very rarely hits the papers. Yeah. Well, I think you, did you get the you got that last copy of information we sent out, didn't you? Well, which was that? Well, there was a phenomena research report and then the UFO sighting updates attached to it. Uh, did you send that to me directly? No, I sent it to the tower. Oh, I didn't. See, they, if they knew it was coming here, they probably kept it from me. Because, they, you know, they think I'm a kook. <laughs> you want me to send some stuff directly to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you uh, have anything like that, don't, I mean. How about to your home address? Well, you, if you send it right here, right I don't here. care. You can do it there okay. or, or you can send it to the tower. But as long as it's just addressed to me. Okay. Uh, nobody else will open it, certainly. Fine, I'll get it in the mail. Yeah, you have the address here? Yeah, I got it out of your directory. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be super. But if you had already sent something to me and it wasn't addressed specifically to me, it was probably deep sixed. So, uh, you know, it's like anything else. You're you're a nut. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> but it's like you know when I called down south here and I said, hey, you guys won't believe this, but you know, I got to call this to you because I can't I can't take any chances. <laughs> And it's like, you have to be kidding. I said, hey, do with it what you want. I'm, call I'm making the report, pal. Here it is. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I, uh, it's funny because you see this stuff like this happen in the movies. And it's always this group, you know, they think you guys are not. And then uh, only in the movies they're, they're proven to be in the, you know, there's always a happy ending. Yeah. You know, the guy's always uh, vindicated somehow, but uh, I've yet to be vindicated. But, 
know, I'm just doing my job the best way I can. And if somebody looks at me a little weird, uh, that's the way it goes. But <laughs> I'm no mind reader and I don't have a crystal ball. I can only go with the information as I see it. Right. And I'm certainly not in the habit or business or normally inclined to fabricate uh, stuff like this. So, you know, I'd rather do it and look like a nut than not do it and have something happen and live with that the rest of my yeah. life. Okay, well, I'll get the stuff in the mail for you, and if I come up with anything additional to that, I'll let you know about it. Okay. Are you the only person that mans this place? No, there's two of us. Uh, yeah, because every time I call out there, you, you're the only one working. Yeah. So. Well, I'm retired, so I got lots of time. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, just one question. Did, did the military ever ask you for information? Did they ever come to you and say, hey, you know, do you have any information on this thing or that thing? Or? Occasionally. It isn't something that happens all the time. Oh, really? But uh, we do get calls here from military bases giving us information in reference to names and phone numbers, and they do pass out our number frequently. Hmm. Amazing. Amazing. In fact, is we got about the same coverage with uh, the Weather Service and, mm -hmm. uh, well, all the military bases, Army, Navy, Coast Guard, and whatever. Mm -hmm. If I find anything more, I'll, I'll certainly I'll get this stuff in the mail to you. But uh, if you find anything, don't don't hesitate to give me a call. Cause sure will. I'm sure interested. Matter, matter of fact, maybe I'll walk over and talk to these guys over at Delta again uh, within the next week or so, just to you know nose around and see if they still adhere to their story, basically. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to also send you some back issues of this stuff. You'll, yeah. You'll find that very very informative. I I will. I certainly will, because I'm, I'll be the first to admit I'm, hey, my knowledge of that is out of the movies, and I'm sure it's not real accurate, so, you know, I'd like to get information as it, as it really is, so, okay, okay Bob, thanks very much, I appreciate it. Okay. Okay? Bye.